Okay, Tomodachis, we're going on a trip. As I mentioned in my last video, we were planning on visiting the fireworks festival on Hachijojima and grabbing some street foods there. Things didn't go to the plan, however, after a typhoon decided to show up and ruin everything. But would I let something like that stub junk food Japan? Of course not. Determined to still have an adventure, we took off from Haneda and towards the eye of the storm. A 30 minute flight from Tokyo, Hachijojima, is a tropical island that was once known as the Hawaii of Japan. Having been the most popular destinations for tourists back in the day, you can still find remnants of a once booming tourist industry on the island. Luckily, Angela and I know some locals on the island, so we were lucky enough to be able to find some great things to do and experience for a couple of nights, even if the weather wasn't on our side gonna be quite the trip. I've been here once before, so I know what to expect. If we get lucky with the sunset, oh my god, it is absolutely dropped in gorgeous. It's like seeing a fireball coming out of the sky and just kind of disappearing into Poseidon's uh, kingdom of the water ocean. Mm. <laughs> Once we arrived, a friend let us borrow this awesome little green car. Okay, honey, come on out. And it was time to make our way to the hotel. We're just checking into the Lido Hotel here on Hachijojima. This is as high end as it gets on this island, I'm telling you. And it's uh, a little bit old, but it's actually quite nice. You've got a great view um, of the volcano right beside us. If that thing blows up in the middle of the night, we have absolutely nowhere to run. <laughs> is it just me, or do the lights in this lobby look like a medieval dungeon torture chamber? Okay, guys, check it out. We're gonna. Use the old-fashioned key. <laughs> this place feels like it was built back in the bubble of Japan, maybe early 80s, late late 80s. And um, the cool thing about it is it's got a fantastic view, but come on and check it out. Look at that! Yeah. Come on! This is absolutely amazing. Man, the crazy thing about stepping outside here is like the heat and the humidity of the island just hits you straight away. It's like walking into a wet sauna almost. It's kind of cool. But then you can actually step out here and because of the location in the middle of the ocean, you've got a really nice breeze. It's like you're, you're kind of like on Hawaii, but in Japan, but not Hawaii at all. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I hope so. But let me show you the rest of the room. Tag along. We've got two beds and they're very hard. <laughs> We've got the massive flat screen TV right here. Your safety deposit if you want to keep your money or whatever it is you want to keep in there. Potentially your passport. And then they've got something that they call a unit bath. You can sit here, do your business, and it's got a shower right beside it. Now the bathtub, even for me, and I'm a fairly big guy as you know, I actually fit quite comfortably in here. It's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty. There better be some food out there. After a night of drinks and karaoke with friends, it was time to head out to the ocean to see those breathtaking Hachijojima views. Due to the severe weather warnings, the fireworks festival that we were originally planned on viewing got cancelled. Hey, at least I get some nice b-roll to show you guys. A few little shots of Angela frolicking near the ocean. Honey, get out of the water! The typhoon's coming! Clearly, she's a free spirit that doesn't listen to anything I say. <laughs> Some nice drone footage. Where's the drone? Oh no, she crashed it. <sighs> yeah, this probably goes without saying, but don't ever fly a drone while it's windy. This is why I'm not the cameraman. Goodbye, Junk Food Japan drone. We hardly knew you. May you rest in peace. <laughs> But even without the drone, I can at least teach you guys a little bit about Hachijojima. It is an island to the home of two volcanoes, with a city and airport located right smack bang in the middle. Historically, the island is said to have been used to exile powerful samurai warriors like Minamoto no Tametomo. But now, it's primarily used for vacations and as a graveyard for YouTubers' drones. <laughs> I'm not gonna get over that. Anyway, it's a great place to get to really feel the natural side of Japan. 
Being surrounded by the ocean, tall trees, volcanoes, it makes you feel somewhat small. If you look out towards the horizon, you could see other smaller islands, which actually kind of looks like the Skull Island, where King Kong would have come from. But we couldn't just let that typhoon ruin our journey. There has to be something here we can enjoy, regardless of the strong winds. Luckily, a friend of mine had recently opened up a lava sauna resort. So let's go take a look. Hachijojima has a lot to offer. Check out the lava, sauna, and villa place here. You could actually come here and stay for a night or two if you liked it, but let's go check out what kind of rooms they have here. The first thing that hits you when you step inside is a nice cool air. I love it, but check it out. We walk inside, we've got a beautiful bathroom in here with a full-size proper tub. All brand new, so it's really fancy and you really feel like you're getting that luxurious feeling. And stepping into the main living room, we have a full-on kitchen. So you could actually get your own grocery stores, make your own food, you can have a proper dinner here at the family dinner table. But even more so that I'm excited about is this if you turn around into the living room. Oh my God, look at that. We've got a full-size movie theater screen in here. So you can sit there, enjoy your movies. You can also do karaoke if that's what you feel like. And it is just absolutely bonkers cool. Two full-size beds. Oh yeah. And all you gotta do is unlock the door and step out into your own private little space. Absolutely breathtakingly beautiful here. I'm loving the palm trees. <laughs> Gets a good feeling of what it would be like to be in a tropical island. Anyway, let's go check out that sauna I was talking about. This place over here is a specifically built dome, which you can see, even by the touch of it, is also warm. You walk through the little door, you make your way in there, and goddamn, that is hot. Woo! Oh yeah, I'm not so good with heat. <laughs> Whew. Now that is hot in there. Just imagine yourself then jumping into the ice cold pool here and just chilling, relaxing. This place is all about coming and getting some specific time for either you and your loved ones or just all you by yourself. While I was doing a tour of the resort, Angela got some proper supersets of sauna and pool time done. We even got a chance to relax a bit with our own private bar. But after all that exploring, I feel like it was time for something refreshing and who doesn't love themselves some awesome shaved ice? Honey, seriously, get back here. For the mango here. I'm gonna try this lemon. Oh, oh wow. Good <laughs> night! Mm. Feeling super refreshed. It was time for a new plan, seeing as the fireworks we originally came here to see was a no-go. Our friend Eiji-san had arranged a little barbecue. And let me introduce you to a staple of Japanese summer here, guys. Nagashi somen. Somen is another type of noodle that's popular in Japan. And like ramen and other dishes, it originally came to Japan from China. It's a really thin noodle that's usually eaten cold and is perfect for those hot and humid Japanese summers. Usually, you would eat somen with things like tsuyu, which is a type of sauce eaten with noodles, and with lots of little extra condiments such as wasabi, long onions, and grated ginger. But today, it's not just regular somen, we're enjoying the nagashi somen. In the summer, it's common for households in Japan to put up a big bamboo water slide in the yard, and then friends and family gather and catch the noodles as they travel down the slide. It is a super popular activity with kids in summer, and a little bit of Japanese culture I thought I'd share with you guys. Mike! So grab up some of those fresh noodles and dip it in the sauce. It is a refreshing way to have some fun with your food in the hot summer months of Japan. But when we thought it was all over, Eiji-san surprised us with a watermelon smashing competition. Angela was up for the challenge, so we squared off and I went for it. Having confidence in my skills, I let her go first. It was so much fun, and although a bit messy, it was a great way to round up the trip we had together. The Lost Fireworks Festival is now a distant memory. We enjoyed the rest of our evening with cold beers and lots of talking. The thing is, we really cracked out a lot of content on this trip. I had a lot of fun. You know, JC's been an amazing guy working with this time. We're gonna really like look forward to some special episode that's coming a little bit later in the year, but stay tuned. 
Help share the channel with all your friends and family. If you like this kind of content, leave a comment below. You know the word tomodachis. And if you like what you see, and you see what you like, why don't you get subscribed to that channel? Set that reminder, and we'll see you in the next one. Wow! Oh my god.